This channel is taking an extended detour deep into espresso territory, and I decided that we need a conventional espresso machine, so I bought one. During the next six months or so, we're going to become intimately acquainted with this gadget. I'll tear it down to microscopic levels, showing it no mercy, but not all at once as I do with grinders. This is a complicated device, and a comprehensive teardown video would be 90 minutes long or more, so I'll be going through one component or subassembly at a time, choosing them as I see fit. But eventually, you're going to know what every gizmo you see here does and how. By the end of this series, you'll have picked up a lot of espresso-making tips, tricks, and insights that I think receive too little attention. And you're going to understand everything about how these machines work. And not just E61 types like this. We can use it to understand integrated and saturated groups in contrast. So if you're thinking about buying an espresso machine, whether fancier or more basic, you'll have the knowledge and understanding to make the right decision. This will also become my test bed for evaluating grinders and other coffee accessories, and a benchmark for evaluating other espresso machines, whether more or less deluxe. I think that explaining my reasoning for why I picked this one out of all the possibilities would make a good start. So, settle in for a thorough introduction to the Profitec Pro 600. Oh my god. It's like a miracle. So, why this particular espresso machine? It's very compact, which is important for me because I'm keeping it in the small area that I use for making videos. I have minimal workspace around my bench here. I've got a PC and monitor for editing, and this fits. Still, it has all the bits that I need to demonstrate components, accessories, and coffee making techniques. I've chosen an E61 group because it's ubiquitous. It's literally a reference device. We talk about other groups in comparison to it. The 61 refers to its year of invention, 1961, a time when electricity was cheap and no one gave it much thought. It's essentially a radiator and quite wasteful of energy. But this old workhorse has a few advantages, chiefly as a teaching device. It's easy to see and understand how it functions, and it's easy to repair and rebuild. This is well-designed, well-built, with quality components throughout. It's user-serviceable, and most importantly, there's room inside for me to work and for you to see what I'm doing. We have a dual boiler setup with PID temperature control. The brew boiler is three quarters of a liter in capacity, and the service boiler, which is one liter, can be turned off. A real feature for me, as I rarely bother with milk. With the service boiler off, the brew boiler can supply hot water for preheating cups or making Americanos. It uses an Ulca 5 series vibration pump, which is smaller than a rotary device, which means more room to work and it's cheap to replace and quiet enough with its rubber mount. I prefer a dedicated brew boiler with PID temperature control over a heat exchanger system. With a heat exchanger, you're always heating a lot more water than you need for brewing, and heating it to a far higher temperature to create pressure for steaming. So a dual boiler setup will be noticeably more energy efficient if you shut off the service boiler, as I often do. It takes a lot less energy to hold three quarters of a liter of water at 92 to 94 degrees than one or two liters at 125 to 130 degrees. That's the chief reason why I prefer not to get a heat exchanger type. Little issues like the siphon possibly stalling and temperature control for pulling shots and steaming are easy to work around when you have an intuitive feel for the machine. Heat exchangers are fine, just not for me. Profitech is part of a family business that also owns ECM, its premium sibling brand. 
While this unit is less costly than its ECM counterpart, the quality is still very high. There are no sharp edges or corners, inside or out. Everyone is properly finished. There are no rattles or squeaks. Everything is level, square, fitted snugly. The chassis is powder-coated steel. Allowing for the paint thickness, I call it 14 gauge, so very solid indeed. Beautifully welded, and the body panels are 20 gauge stainless. The boilers are stainless steel. Because it's heavily built and behaves predictably, it could serve for light commercial duty at, say, a restaurant or bar where you're not making coffee all the time, but you want to get it right. There's good clearance under it, so it's easy to move. I would love to see adjustable feet here, but these can be backed out a little to level the machine. A bit more thread length and a threaded flat washer to lock things in place would be nice. If I could add anything else to my wish list, it would be illuminated dials for the two stock pressure gauges. One trade-off here is the size. Your controls are all close together and they can block each other, so you need to think about your workflow. If you reach for things impulsively, you'll waste time. I'll do a video addressing that in the near future. I bought a bunch of Profitech accessories because they all looked good and I thought I should evaluate them for you. I'll get to each of them in time. The first one I'll be talking about is the Flow Control Kit. We'll see what that brings to the party. And of course, we'll be looking at those fancy baskets and shower screens that everybody loves very soon as well. Now, some of you know how I feel about my Cafelat robot, but it does have one limitation, which is temperature control. So I'm looking forward to playing with temperature on this machine, assuming the PID controller works as it should. I did some quick, casual testing and found that the brewing water temperature control is spot on. I'll do more careful temperature testing later, but for now, I get a good impression. This system has been idle for 30 minutes and the group is fully warmed up. We're starting with a boiler reading of 92 degrees on the display. I'll start with the probe touching the shower with a portafilter loosely engaged. The water runs cool at first. It reaches its peak temperature within 10 seconds and it appears to be the same as the displayed temperature to within one half a degree Celsius. In an upcoming video, I'll do more careful temperature testing using a probe inside the brewing water channel and on the dispersion plate, and I'll sacrifice a basket and mount a probe inside it to directly test the extraction temperature of the coffee under various conditions. That, after all, is the temperature that really matters. I bought this from an Irish outfit in Galway called Home Coffee Machines, run by Kieran Madison, who says he really appreciates quality equipment that's built to last and meant to be serviced rather than replaced. So that's what he carries, and that appeals to me too. There's a link in the description if you'd like to check out his shop. Well, that's about all I've got for today. In the next video, I'll install the flow control kit for you and test it thoroughly. And I'm about to receive a new Eureka Mignon Libra espresso grinder, which doses by weight rather than time, which I'm really looking forward to testing. So keep in touch. Cheers.